Kate, welcome to the Customer Experience Podcast. I'm thrilled to have you as my guest today. We've been trying to do this for a little while, haven't we? Just a while, yeah. <laughs> a few things uh, getting in the way. But yeah. yes, good to be here. Thank yeah, you. good to have you here. How are you today? Yeah, good, yes. Um, today's Freedom Day, so okay. yeah, it all feels like yeah. we're getting back to whatever normal is. Yeah, so that's good. yeah, good stuff. So I thought we could centre the topic today around um, driving kind of customer experience in a sector that could be deemed as not very CXC. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're currently working at Biffa yeah. um, and leading the customer a strategy there mm-hmm. um so you know waste management you know can be seen as something that you know how do you have yeah. a good customer experience in in that <laughs> sector so i thought actually let's bring it to life um for the listeners to really see that you know no matter what sector you're in there's absolutely a customer strategy at the heart so um so let's start off with you sharing with the listeners you know a bit more about yourself mm-hmm. your role at biffa um and ultimately why you're so passionate about driving the customer strategy yeah sure so uh so yeah you're quite right waste industry is not particularly CXE um, uh, and I think you know when I look back over my career none of the roles that I've had in any of the industries would be classic kind of customer experience type roles but I think it is to your point really important to recognize that whatever wherever you have a customer interaction there is the opportunity to make that really good experience um, so I joined Biffa um, around 18 months ago which is really scary Um, to think that that time's gone so quickly Um, and if you cast your mind back 18 months ago that was as we were just coming out of the first lockdown Um, so a really odd time to be joining an organisation particularly um, uh, an operational logistical operation uh, organisation so um, yeah so I, I I joined just as we were ramping up. We were just getting back out to customers. Our customers were opening back up. um, And we were, um, you know, trying to get everything back to whatever the new normal was in that very early stages of the pandemic. Um, So my role uh, that I I undertake at Biffa is looking after two customer contact centres. And then I also have a very newly formed CX team, which I'm really excited about. So we've morphed a team um, to be focused much more on customer experience, whereas their traditional role was much more process improvement, quality, the more standard things that you would sort of expect to see in more traditional companies. So yeah, so that's um, that's what I'm there to do at, at Biffa, um, and yeah, it's a, it's been a, a very challenging time, shall we say? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I think joining any organisation kind of pre you know kind of in the middle of the pandemic mm-hmm. or certainly you know right now it's 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 different isn't it and it mm-hmm. does kind of you know make you have to dig deep in terms of right what's my purpose here what am I going to do because yeah. knowing that things aren't quite how they were before or maybe how yeah. they're going to be so so all good so customer experience at Biffa then what does that mean to you so what what does how do you deliver customer experience at Biffa yeah so it, I mean it's it's the standard thing for any customers in any organization um, there is a very basic side to what Biffa does which is we go out and we collect waste so there is absolutely the opportunity there around making sure that that is an invisible service for customers um, that you know that we turn up when they expect us to turn up and we do what they're expecting us to do when you know when they want us to do it and um, so from a very basic level you know that you know it's the same as buying a pair of shoes you order a pair of shoes you expect the shoes to come you expect them to be the ones that you ordered it's no different um, from a waste perspective but I think the really um, the really cool and interesting thing around waste is that you can go much further much um, broader than that with customers um, and it's about that education piece it's about being a partner with customers to help them maximize what they want to achieve as an organization um, and I think from a waste perspective um, with everybody's uh, aims and desires around sustainability and looking after the environment and just being a much more responsible um, organisation, we have a really key role to, uh, to play in that to help customers understand where they can make improvements and differences. But the basic, you know, you need to get that bit right first. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, I mean, you talked then about the environment. I mean, David Attenborough inspired all of us, you know, um, in in the previous years around just really saving the planet and looking mm-hmm. after our planet. And I guess for Biffa, you know, the purpose behind waste management, recycling, mm-hmm. you know, is has become a real important kind of factor of people wanting to know more about it, wanting to get involved yeah. in it now as well. You know, can you explain, I suppose, with, with that purpose for Biffa, 
how does that really benefit your customers mm-hmm. so if you you know that's what you do you mm-hmm. recycle you know you've got your kind of waste management services but you know uh, uh, being part of that mm-hmm. looking after the planet mm-hmm. if you like you know in the day to day as to the the services that you guys provide how how does that benefit the end customer yeah so i think uh, you know one of the key things to to draw out there is our purpose as an organisation is to change the way people think about waste so as a as a consumer as a as a household you know you just want the waste to be gone you don't want to think about it the fact that now we're able to you know put our recycling in different bins and we're able to segregate um, what we do as households um, is no different from um, how small businesses operate and you know to a much better degree how um, corporates operate but I think you know what Biffa um, the mission that we have around changing the way people think about waste is that we we look at the the waste hierarchy so if you consider the hierarchy as a, as a sort of an upside down triangle we start at the top with that how do we stop things getting into the waste cycle to start with so what can we do to prevent waste being waste in the first place um, then we kind of move down to that recyclable element which you know we are all becoming much more familiar with but it is a very complicated um, area and, and kind of quite difficult to navigate for, for some of our customers um, then you come into how, how do you recover energy from waste so rather than burying it in the ground what can we do with that waste um, that's that's um, yeah not burying it in the ground using it for, for energy purposes uh, but you will always have a place for um, for waste that does need to go to, to landfill and it's recognising what that is and making sure that you're minimising that and doing that in the most um, sensible way for the environment so for our customers it's about education it's about helping and assisting and not making things overly complicated trying to keep things simple um, and sharing you know the the knowledge and experience that we have um, in the sector as well as you know kind of helping to form government thinking around this area so yeah there's lots lots of opportunities but it's yeah it's trying to make it you know go back to your first point it's not very it's not very cxy it's not very it's not a very sexy thing to talk about but it's making it so that it's accessible and interesting to all customers um rather than those that have a really high sustainability agenda yeah and i guess with that in mind the complexity Mm because you know we have it here in the office we've got recycle bins and you know often we get told off because it's in the wrong one um and and i guess you know how how do you as a leader approach kind of helping the organization break down some of that complexity for your customers Mm -hmm. and and help your team that are serving those customers you know really cut through that complexity as well yeah so uh, and you know this will be the same for any organization with any customers it's understanding who your customer is so um when i think about um the the sales team that i have that that sit under me this is about having those sensible purposeful conversations that we're not just trying to sell them a service that we're understanding what their need is Mm -hmm. and then we're looking at our services and suggesting what is appropriate based on that customer need rather than going okay we've got all of this stuff what would be most suitable for you you know kind of take a a pick and mix view it's for us to be able to to educate Um, and certainly from a from the corporate um, perspective you know the the um, the level of detail that those account managers um, have on their sectors so that they really understand what the needs are of the customers and can support and help and make sure that they're aware of um, all the services that we have to offer Um, but it is you know it it is complex we kind of come back to the household thing a lot of that is driven by what um, uh, what local councils want to deliver um, and how they want to deliver that service. So there, there is certainly a long way to go in terms of cutting through complexity, certainly as an as a end customer consumer. Yeah. And, and I guess digitalisation, you know, mm-hmm. how, you know, what examples have kind of um, you got in terms of the customer piece around where you have digitalised mm-hmm. the services or experiences for your customers i mean some of it is like literally truck rolls and yeah. going to physical you know kind of residential or mm-hmm. business properties but what what kind of level of digitalization have biffa managed to kind of achieve yeah and I, you know this is something that we are um not overly mature in this space compared to, to other organizations but certainly it's something that we are really invested in um, we have had a customer portal for a, a number of years where customers are able to go on and self-serve, but that's not really groundbreaking. That's kind of a given. That's what customers expect. 
Um, and what we are doing is we're actually um, further developing that to make sure that it's fit for all of our customers and that it is a much nicer user experience. Um, but the, the technology and the pieces has been there for a number of years. Um, the other thing that we did during um, during the pandemic was uh, introduce a, an e-commerce platform uh, so that customers could truly buy online from start to end what services that they want. And you kind of at the start of it, you go, well, that you know should be a fairly simple proposition. But again, when you kind of consider how do you understand a customer needs from an e-commerce platform without bombarding them with a million questions and turning the whole experience into a nightmare. Um, we've, we've really looked at, okay, what customers should be able to go through that as an end-to-end -end and making sure that we've got the right information for them uh, to do that and where they need extra support, how do we intervene in that journey um, to, to give them the right information to make sure the end result is what they need. So not relying solely on digital, um, but making sure that we're using that and, and kind of moving between, you know, people and, and digital. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess that blend is kind of where most, you know, kind of businesses are now mm -hmm. is, is, you know, uh, last week talking to someone else in the industry and just kind of actually how the human element of service is mm -hmm. actually become important again as yep. a result of the pandemic because mm -hmm. you know just how we were all starved from that for yeah. so long we realized how important it was mm -hmm. as well so you know having the need for both really is, yeah. is, is definitely important so you were really excited talking to me earlier about your team yep. and this new cx kind of um yes you know, kind of arm to it mm -hmm. outside of the traditional core mm -hmm. support services mm -hmm. that you would have had, you know, wrapped around your customers team. So what does this new CX team do and how is that kind of helping the customer agenda and your customers? Yeah, so we, so when I, when I joined Biffer, I was really keen, um, obviously I was remote. So the normal things that you would do in an organization, so sitting and listening to calls, getting out and seeing customers, you know, going on a, what we term as a truck day. So seeing what it's like to be out there um, face to face with customers. I, I was very much hamstrung in that area because <laughs> I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. Um, so kind of supplemented that by having a very, very low um, uh, budget <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> approach to just okay I need to know what customers are feeling and, and what they think about Biffa so we introduced um, a, a very simple tactical survey so that we could start to gauge okay where are customers at what we have done now is we've extended that and, and we've partnered with um, uh, with Qualtrics so they're helping us to understand that voice of customer and helping us with our voice of customer programs and what that's enabled us to do um, is we had started, well, we had mapped the, the customer journeys um, and the insight that we had from these surveys and from call listening, we were adding the emotion and the stories against those customer journeys. But now with um, the partner in Qualtrics, we've been much, uh, been able to dip deep into, dig deep into that data and that insight to understand that better. So the CX team, that's kind of their holy grail. They mm -hmm. absolutely dive into this information all the time. But alongside that, they, they um, I have Six Sigma experts that sit in that team that are going, OK, but this is a process problem. This is, And then they will go and, and kind of look at the process and, and see where we can drive efficiencies from a customer lens. So yeah, it's it's a really exciting time, um, particularly for that team where you know if you're only kind of looking at processes in isolation without that customer lens, you're not looking at it from outside in. You're constantly looking inside to go, okay, how can we you know bring drive out cost? And um, this is a much healthier um, way of uh, approaching the business, I think. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I guess how much you were with that in mind? How much you are your kind of customer maps then in terms of just you know are you really hot on capturing all of the kind of key touch points across the different journeys and you know really looking at that regularly just to make sure the service that then you are delivering is is against those value propositions that you you'd intended and set out at yeah. the start so in terms of the mapping the journey as it stands today absolutely that is that's um you know well understood documented and you know we, we kind of understand where those touch points are what we do have from that is a whole raft of initiatives um, and we have you know um, methodologies around how we prioritize those initiatives that are falling out of that what we don't have and what we're not mature in that that space is okay so blank sheet of paper what should the customer experience look like okay. and how do we want to design that from the ground up um, 
there is, you know, from, from my perspective, there is a, an element of saying, okay, we, where we know there is customer pain, can we not sit on our hands and wait for a big investment in some new technology or a, you know, a, a big shift in what we need to do because there is some really easy low-hanging fruit here that we need to just get on and fix because that will make the customer's life better tomorrow rather than in a year's time. Yeah. So it's trying to balance those things and making sure that we're making a difference and, and making changes, which sometimes can feel very small, um, yeah. but the impact on the customer ultimately is, is significant. So. Yeah. And Qualtrics and the new kind of um, insight and analytics tools that Mm -hmm. you've got and this team that, you know, as you say, that's their kind of holy grail in terms of the purpose for them as Mm -hmm. to them knowing what they're going after. How do you cascade that across the organisation so that that uh, customer heartbeat and voice of customer Mm -hmm. is company-wide across the whole firm and not just within your team and your... Yeah, and that's, that has been a real challenge. And that is where, you know, you kind of come back to, okay, we're operating post-pandemic, but still in strange times. Um, as an organisation, we've faced um, challenges that many organisations that have HGV drivers in have faced. Um, you know, we've had the, a series of challenges aside from the pandemic over the last year. And you kind of go, okay, if I go out and do a big bang, exciting, this is what we're talking about customer, you know, everybody should get excited about this the the appetite for that just just wasn't there last mm. year and um, people were tired people have had enough and um going out with something um that would you know take up a a, a proportion of brain space if nothing else was not the right approach to to take so we are um we are doing that in a much more low level okay. way um so sharing that insight so making sure it's available if people want to find it um we are communicating that out um, in positive ways around what we've changed, what's been exciting, and then you know having a, a central area where people can dig into it if they have that space to do it. Mm-hmm. Going into next year will be a whole different um, different proposition, but just in this kind of holding pattern, you know, are we in the office? Are we have the office? Are we locked down? Are we back out? It's mm-hmm. it didn't feel that that was the right time to do any sort of big bang um, customer experience work. Yeah, makes sense. And and I guess you know driving a customer centric culture. Mm-hmm. It's hard because, you know, people think that the customer service director is responsible Mm -hmm. for customers solely um, and that the customer team, everything starts and ends there. And that's true in lots of ways Mm -hmm. because of just the operational side of, you know, that agenda. But actually, true customer centricity comes from everyone feeling responsible and it being quite, you know, tangible in terms Mm -hmm. of the way that people talk and behave yeah. talk to talk to me about your experience of that you know in or out of Biffa in terms mm-hmm. of you know how you've approached getting that customer centricity and the buy-in from the whole organization really to fly that yeah. customer flag yeah so I think I mean if I start with Biffa Biffa is a really interesting um organization in that the I haven't met anybody who's not passionate about the customer so there isn't anybody that's kind of going no I you know not interested I've got my bit of the the organization to to get on with everybody is very focused on customer the challenge of that is that everybody's perception of what is the right thing to do for customer isn't necessarily consistent Mm -hmm. across the piece so you can point to amazing examples of brilliant customer experience that's going on but then you can equally point to you know disastrous things where you know if one thing's gone wrong a hundred things have gone wrong for that customer so for me it's around that consistency piece and and looking at how do we drive that which will be a whole myriad of um, different approaches Um, what's where we've started with that is to be really clear on what that CX vision is and getting buy-in from Michael our CEO um, and taking that sort of down um, through the organization to to kind of socialize it to to kind of say you know does this make sense to you we have a brilliant um, team at at Biffa called the Biffa Involvement Group um, where people are right across the organization come together to help form what we're doing as an organization so they they help to design the values and they're really instrumental in changing you know the shape of those that they were meaningful um and so we've we've recently taken the cx vision to to that group to sort of say you know this is what we're thinking does this work for you does it make any sense are you scratching your head and thinking what on earth are you on about um (laughs) so it's those kind of initiatives that um that 
I think is how you win hearts and minds because people need to be part of it. It can't be myself or um, and my head of CX going, okay, this is what we're doing, right, let's roll it out. It needs to be a participative yeah. um, uh, way of approaching it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what about the customer? How mm-hmm. involved does the customer, you know, get in reviewing some of those changes mm-hmm. that have been proposed or just bring into life the pain points that the team yeah. are identifying through you know the voice the customer program mm-hmm. do you get customers in at all do you have customer labs or so we don't get them in because yeah. of the obvious, <laughs> the obvious. <laughs> virtually in. yes um, but we have so a great example of that is the the development that i spoke to on the customer portal and yeah. um, so before we kicked off the the um, rework of that um technology we initially went to a a group of customers to say okay do you use the portal now if you do what do you think of it also customers that we know don't use the portal why don't you use it so we were really clear in terms of where our customers minds were at we've then continued with that customer panel approach as we've gone through development Mm -hmm. um, and they are absolutely part of that testing the the UAT piece um, to to kind of help us shape and make sure that it is what they want rather than what we think they want um, which you know Sometimes it's obvious, but you know, there's always something in there. You go, oh, yeah, I didn't realise that that was that exactly, that, you know, relevant to, to yeah, customers. A little nugget. Yes. Yes. Yeah, lovely. So your team, you know, I guess if you think about the evolution, not just the pandemic and everything that's been happening in the last mm-hmm. two years, but have you found? I mean, you know, coming into Biffa from other organisations, even, mm-hmm. but the training and the coaching and what mm-hmm. you need from the team that are supporting that customer agenda has that evolved and massively is it pretty much mm. the same i mean you've got a different shape of team now yeah. um and obviously using the insight to, to drive their agenda but you know ha- has that evolved at all do you in terms of a leader serving your people and the people that are supporting your customer mm-hmm. how 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 you onboard them nurture them look after them train them has, has that changed yeah so i think um uh, from a uh, from my perspective of being in customer service for way too many years to mention <laughs> there's definitely been that that move over the years to to not being kind of a glorified receptionist so not just being the middle person that fires things to various other departments to, to fix and just getting the earache in the middle um so certainly from a biffa point of view that's um where we're driving the team. The training and the development um, angle is something that I'm hugely passionate about. But again, it's just been so hard with just trying to keep things going. So it's, okay, do you take people off and give them some amazing training or do we just get them to answer the phone? Because yeah. that's where the, the real need is at the minute. Yeah. So um, yeah, there is lots of work to do there um, around training and development, I think in customer service teams across the board. Um, we as customer service people seem to have much more information because of technology which is great um but you know when i listen to to customer calls and this is not just biffa you know other customer calls and you hear you know it being spouted to the customer when the customer just doesn't care they don't care (laughs) where you know where your driver is or or what you know what your inside processes are and myself as a customer the other day trying to book a service for my car oh my gosh so so difficult and the you know the the person that I was speaking to was absolutely lovely on the phone but telling me you know what's and all this is what's going on (laughs) I don't care just can you just book it in (laughs) um so I think there is this this piece that we've we've we want customer service people to be knowledgeable. We want them to really be able to help customers. Um, but we need to be really balancing that with, okay, yeah, customers don't need to know all the dirty laundry. No. <laughs> it's not really that useful. <laughs> and how do we temper that to make sure that, you know, you've got a successful customer outcome at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, your example there of, you know, having a bad experience just booking a service, mm. I think there's just been so much of, you know, that about poor services as a result Mm -hmm. of the pandemic and some of it is is rightly justified you know around capacity issues the people there to serve the customer Mm -hmm. and you know all and and sounds from from what you've shared you've had Mm -hmm. things outside you know of Mm -hmm. the pandemic obviously the the situation with drivers etc as well just to add to that kind of pain really so following on from 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 the example you just shared as well I think what I'm finding at the minute that so many people are using COVID as an excuse mm-hmm. for bad service. And mm-hmm. some of that's justified, right? Mm-hmm. We, you know, you use the example of things outside of your control with the HGV drivers, you know, real life situation, you know, mm-hmm. you've, your capacity's yeah. reduced. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it does feel like some brands and organisations 
have absolutely exploited it mm -hmm. to reduce costs, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, to do things that haven't had the customer at the heart mm -hmm. of that agenda. Um, you know, what, what's your view on that in terms of what you've experienced, even as a consumer? Yeah, so I, I yeah, I totally, I, I would hate to think that people are doing that um, kind of in that in that way, but I'm sure it does happen in, in some organisations. I think the thing for me is the, you know, we've been given all this amazing tech, right? And we get all excited about this tech, but we don't always necessarily put it in place as it was intended, or it hasn't been thought through fully. Um, so from, uh, you know, if I use that, that booking my car in for a service, that should have been an amazing um, opportunity to go online, select a couple of dates, put it out to the service thing and then get a confirmation back. Um, that didn't work. So the response I got back was, well, we've booked you in for this date, which was none of the dates I'd selected. Mm -hmm. Phone, phone this number if it doesn't work. So then had to wait ages to get through because they're obviously not geared up then to take the call because they're relying on the technology to, to provide the service. So then you get through to the call person eventually, um, try again, and it doesn't work again. And then you, you know, when I phone back, it's like, well, actually, there's no connection between that booking system and what okay. availability is in the garage. And I kind of go, well, that, you know, that kind of feels very familiar. And I think there's lots of organisations that have kind of relied on technology and maybe reduced headcount or resource it, because you've got this technology. That was the case for having it. But then, but then it hasn't been kind of seamlessly end to end, or they haven't thought of all the eventualities that mean that for some customers, you end up having a much worse experience than if you just resourced a contact centre. Which I'm not saying you know it's people aren't the answer to everything, but I think you know it's, yeah. it's trying to get that balance right. You're right, and it almost seems like a a basic as well, yes. doesn't it? In terms of just walking in the shoes of the customer yeah. to kind of think right. Let's not just map out the happy mm -hmm. path here. Things yeah. will go wrong, and let's mm -hmm. just make sure that all still works and yeah. you know it is surprising how often you know we all hit a bit of a wall with a process yeah. where we think well someone's just not tested that this still works as it was yeah. intended or it's fit for purpose anymore yeah. so I guess that continuous improvement mm -hmm. and someone constantly looking at through the customer lens yeah. what that experience looks and feels like is essential really yeah, yeah. Um, it's like chatbots isn't it that's my yeah. other that's a soapbox of mine you know chatbots <laughs> sound like the amazing answer to everything don't they but personally I've never met one that I like um, <laughs> and you just kind of you go okay you understand the sentiment because it means the customer can get that instant information but invariably it's not the information the customer actually wants yeah, yeah. and I think you're right because I think you know exactly what you said there was around the technology the business case stacked yeah. up and it's about yeah. deploying it but mm -hmm. actually you know do people take the time to get the customer involved in mm -hmm. the design thinking? Mm -hmm. Have they got you know people on the front line involved mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. close to the customer and just yeah. you know not seeing it as a technology project, but seeing yeah. it as a customer experience project mm -hmm. where you've got cross-functional teams involved? Absolutely. Um, we we had um, a guest on the CX podcast bringing to life around how actually the bot became the primary channel for mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. and they were getting four out of five stars in terms Fantastic. of ease of use. I mean, at least you know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> The very group, um, but it was it was amazing because to yeah. your point, it's, that's not normal. No. Um, but they've invested in the customer labs and they've got their yeah, frontline staff involved, cross functional teams. Mm -hmm. It's a business wide initiative mm -hmm. rather than a technology implementation, and mm -hmm. the change is more successful as a yeah. result, really. So earlier on, Kate, you shared how, you know, rightly so, um, you had challenges outside of the organisation, mm -hmm. um, out of your control, which meant it wasn't the right time to be jazz hands and sharing mm -hmm. some of the great insight from your new tool mm -hmm. um, across the business uh, far and wide, mm -hmm. but it was there for people to see. Um, but actually, I guess, you know, in terms of every day, people turning up, you know, you said people are passionate mm -hmm. in your organisation, but... How, in, you know, in your experience as a leader, how do you make that kind of rhythm and heartbeat mm -hmm. kind of alive in an organisation where people do feel that they're there to serve the customer, mm -hmm. they see the part they play mm -hmm. in that, mm -hmm. um, and they kind of wear that badge with honour, really, and, mm -hmm. and it's kind of just how they show up mm -hmm. um, daily. How, how, as a leader, do you make that happen? How do you kind of really... Um, ensure that it's happening across the organisation. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we've got a way to go um, from a Biffa standpoint, but I think it comes down to what you measure. Um, so, you yeah, know, making sure that what you are measuring is things that customers actually care about, um, and that they're real indicators of the, of the health of, of our customer relationships, um, which sometimes is 
easier said than done and doesn't you know it doesn't it's not always uh, pleasant reading or pleasant um, understanding uh, but I think that you know making sure that we're not measuring things that drive sort of anti-customer behavior because it feels like it's the right thing to do for the organization um, so when I, I've worked with somebody uh, in the, the CX industry um, who uses uh, cinemas as, as the example, which I always use to the team because it's something you can really tangibly ho- get hold of. And you think, well, as a cinema, you're kind of interested in how many bums on seats, how many, um, how much popcorn you've sold, how many varieties of film you had up. So you'll have these key performance indicators that you think are you know, showing how well you're performing. From a customer point of view, they don't care if the cinema's full. <laughs> um, sure. They care if the film they want to see is is on, um, but they don't care if you've got a wide variety, and certainly don't care about your popcorn popcorn sales. Um, you know, what they care about is you know how easy is it to park to when I get there. You know, can I go for a meal before or after the film? And you know, it's things like that that you know, as an organisation, you kind of need to take a step back and go, okay, what is it that we're actually measuring here, and what what is it that customers actually care about? And and that's part of the journey that we're on now which is just kind of a holding that mirror up and saying okay are these genuinely customer facing or customer interesting measurements or are there some things that we need to to change and address there so it's and, and, and again it's trying to get that balance right because there's obviously things as an organization we need to be caring about but it's making sure that we've got that customer lens on um you know particularly those performance things that affect you know how people do their job every day and the behaviors around that yeah and do you feel that, you know, the organisation as a whole has enough customer m- metrics so that people can see the impact that they're having to the end customer? Yeah, so I think we, I think we do. I think, um, as I say, there is absolutely progress that we need to make in that space. So I don't think we've got it quite right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the setup for Biffa is the, you know, from a depot. So the depots are the guys that are planning the the collections the guys that are going out and making those collections they care so much about their customers mm-hmm. to the point that they'll say you know customer service don't speak to them this is our customer we're <laughs> dealing with it we'll sort it all out which is fantastic but it's then making sure that where there are these you know we're a big organization so you can't do everything bespoke so where there are these overreaching processes that we're measuring the right things in there to drive the right behaviors across the piece rather than you know those specific yeah. you know going back to that inconsistency yeah. piece again yeah avoiding the silos yes yeah, yeah. but I, quite, I like that thought of you know they're, they're their customers oh they yeah, yeah. really passionate really <laughs> passionate and you know you don't want customer service getting in and messing it up which you know it's fantastic but it's again that consistency yeah, piece absolutely so um I guess in terms of who you look at um, for innovation and 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 where you've seen great examples of customer experience, can you bring to life some some brands or companies that you've interacted with where you think actually yeah, regardless of sector, they're ones to watch. They're doing yeah. it well. Um, so I, I mean, I read a huge amount and I'm you know listen to podcasts all the time and kind of constantly wowed by going oh god everybody else has kind of got it nailed and everyone else is kind of doing really well. Um, you know the the obvious um, the obvious one is uh, Zappos that you know traditionally. Um, absolutely hold in awe because of the way they were able to take it from a human perspective. I'm a human being dealing with a human being um, and therefore I can use my own brain because just because I work in customer service doesn't mean my brain has been removed. Um, and they, you know, that, that really um, agile way of being able to respond to customers and being able to personalize that we get so hung up about in CX um, personalized meaning just matching how that customer is interacting with you and being you know genuine with that customer so I always I, I always have Zappos in my head as something that I would aspire greatly to to achieve yeah. you know having that freedom of people to to use their own brains and just be you know decent yeah. human beings yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is not to say they're not now but you know that yeah. that that is the the nugget for me from from a Zappos I think from a from a UK perspective I'm a huge fan of John Lewis always have been love the the model and the um approach that that they have there um you know that kind of that no nonsense, that security that you know that if you've um, if you've got an issue as a consumer that they'll just sort it out. And Costco kind of falls into that same bracket yeah. for me that you know it's not jazzy and beautiful displays, but it is you know that you know if you have any issues that there's not going to be a problem sorting it out. Yeah. 
Um, but yes, I think you know all the all the usual suspects. I kind of always look <laughs> at and go, oh. Yeah. But I also make the point. I do make the point at Biffa that we are not trying to be Disney. Yeah. So you know, I have um, had the very uh, lucky privilege of going on a, on a Disney holiday and, and being absolutely wowed by it. Um, but that's you know, it's taking the elements of that. We're not putting bows on bins. We're not trying to wow our customers. We just, you know, we just need to get the service right and and kind of cause no problems for our customers. Yeah. Or if there are problems, because it's a service, that we fix them really quickly with little pain. Yeah. Um, That's a really, really important point, actually, around just remembering what your value proposition is, yeah. the customer value proposition, and staying true to that. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, getting that right consistently, you use that word, you know, a few times, actually... Often customers don't want to be wowed. <laughs> they just want you to deliver yes. consistently on the expectation yeah. that you yeah. set them mm-hmm. up front what it feels like interacting yeah. with your business. So yeah. if you get that right, actually you will have a lot of happy customers. Yeah. You know, the, the wow moments are kind of almost the unexpected really, the exactly. the thrill that they they they're not they're, mm-hmm. they 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 are not expecting. Therefore, if you do it or you don't, they you know. Yeah. You've just got to do the basics right. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So um, you've mentioned some of the challenges, um, at, you know, this, this, through the podcast today. But are there any other kind of key pain points from from your perspective, driving the customer strategy, where you, you know, you've really had to overcome um, to be able to continue to drive that customer centric mm-hmm. agenda? Yeah. So I think I, this will, I'm sure, resonate with lots of people. It is around that tangible element of the work that we do so we know there are changes that we want to make because you know in your gut it is the right thing to do for the customer but then from a you know if we look at it as purely as a business case it's like okay how do I make this tangibly effective um, to get people's attention because there is you know there is something very difficult around saying look in my gut it's the right thing to do can I have some money please just doesn't really wash in business <laughs> um, so I think that that has been um, something that I've worked really hard on with the team to say okay it can't be the be all and end all because some things are just the right thing to do um, you know if I take our portal um re-implementation that we're doing at the moment that was not done on the business case that it's going to you know revolutionize the contact center and you know going to make lots of efficiencies it was done because it was the right thing to do um so we're not you know not hell bent hell bent on um making sure things are tangible but there is you know in terms of credibility of what you are delivering to the organization being able to assign that to customer attrition being able to assign that to reduction in contact being able to assign it to something meaningful that sits outside of you know the people that are really you know oh please can we just do it because it's just the right thing to do so it's trying to get to get the measures um, and get those tangible um, numbers and the data to support what we're trying to achieve. Um, yeah, that's probably been my, my biggest challenge. And then, you know, as I say, just, you know, you're kind of all focused on uh, what we want to deliver. Um, I think it was this time last year that we, we kind of started to enter into a steel shortage, which you need mm-hmm. steel to make bins. So if you don't have any bins, then that makes it quite tricky to, to kind of uh, wow your new customers. Um, because that's kind of firm part of the proposition. Um, so you 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 know that making sure that yes we are flexible enough to react to those challenges and to put a customer experience lens on how we handle those, but we don't get too far off track of what we are trying to deliver um, for for the whole customer base. You know, just hearing the examples that you've shared about these outside mm. factors of things, <laughs> these curveballs. Yes. Um, you know, of course, it's obvious when you say it about yeah. a steel so- a shortage, but. Mm-hmm. You know, these are all of the things in the background that, you know, when you're leading the customer, you know, strategy, these are all real mm-hmm. life problems that yeah. behind the scenes, there's a lot of people that are working hard to make sure the impact to the customer is minimal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it's not easy delivering a great no. customer experience, <laughs> is it? We've got the battle scars, Kate, haven't we? <laughs> so, um, just focusing on the pandemic again for a moment. Mm-hmm. Um Adaptions were made as a result mm-hmm. of the pandemic. It had to be, but I guess with your customer teams, you know, what are the things that, from a, a, a way of working that you had to pivot to, that actually now will help you serve your customers better going mm-hmm. forward. Therefore, are things you're going to adopt and, and take yeah. forward and strengthen? Are there any examples of things that you've done that actually? pandemic was a bit of an accelerator and you're going to keep them yeah i mean i never 
you know, being in customer service for, for the number of years I've been, I never thought we'd get to a situation where you would have customer contact centres working from home. What an amazing catalyst uh, the pandemic was to go, so you can do it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I can't take any credit for the amazing work that the team did prior to me starting, but they lifted and shifted the contact centres and got everybody working from home really quickly, really seamlessly. Um, we did keep uh, one of our centres open um, because we recognised that for some of our, uh, the demographic of some of our people, working from home was just not a practical option. Um, so we, you know, we have absolutely had COVID safe measures I- in that office, but we enabled people to come back into the office to work because that was safer and better for them. Um, so, so yeah, so we've kind of had this very mini hybrid working. Yeah. Most people were at home few people in the office um, but what we're what we're entering into now is very much a hybrid um, approach because I think we absolutely recognize for some people working from home has worked incredibly well um, and you know the the level of service that they've been able to offer because they're just more at peace with the world you know they're not running around like lunatics trying to spin all the plates that we all have to spin um, has, has really worked but we also know that for others that just was not working for them at all um, so, so we are having this hybrid um, approach of people in the office for a few days and working from home for a few days, or office full time if that's what suits them best. Mm. Um, I think you know the other other things that we really kind of started to to think about was how do you proactively get information out to customers. So where lockdowns were kind of happening, you know, almost with a day's notice, and you know businesses would be shut so how do you communicate to those customers that what we're going to do to support them and, and what their service is going to look like so we you know we utilized as many different um channels as we could to get those messages out and that's something that we're continuing on with yeah. um you know the storms that we've just had in the, in the, over oh, the yeah. last. I forgot about that one and affect you as oh, well oh gosh yes <laughs> so that was okay quick you know like okay where are all those channels that we've been using through the pandemic let's re, re reinvigorate those let's get the message out there so just that ability to to kind of just think quickly or quicker about how do we get messages to customers whereas I think pre-pandemic they didn't really have to do that um so yeah that that's yeah and I guess opening up the lines of communication just being a little bit more just having more flexibility around that getting to say you know getting the word out to more customers quickly and effectively through the digital channels as well as obviously the, the traditional yeah Okay, so bringing us to a bit of a close, um, be great to hear from you. You do, you do a lot of reading, you shared mm-hmm. that earlier, but f- from your perspective, what are the key predictions you would make for what's going to happen in the world of CX in the next three to five years? Yeah, it's a really hard one. I kind of um, think about that a lot around, okay, where is this going? And I think... Uh, I mean, CX does have a bit of a um, a bad reputation in terms of, oh, it's just something that companies say they're doing um, in order to appease their customers, but the customer doesn't actually feel any different. And I think it's kind of going back to, to what I said um, earlier in the conversation that the big, the big organisations that have got it right and have been able to invest in it, um, I think they will probably completely blow my mind with what's going to come in the next five years. Um, but for the rest of us mere mortals <laughs> that are all scrabbling around to, to, to catch up, I think it is about really um, making sure that the proposition is for, not just for the customer, but for the whole, you know, that kind of conscious capitalism piece yeah. that it is for everybody. So, you know, we talk about customer centricity, but you don't kind of get customer centricity if you're not kind to your employees and you can't invest in customer focused things if you're not, you know, delivering a great um, opportunity for your investors. So it's it's really looking at it in the round. And I think that's where CX needs to move to in the next um, few years around, away from this. It's all about customer because without those other pieces, you're not delivering the good service to customers because you need you need all of those elements to play in yeah. I think the other piece is data I think that's there's going to be some really big tough questions around data which also links into that that kind of conscious um, you know what are we doing why are we asking for data what are we doing with it are we being responsible are we you know you kind of go back into the older times of marketing where it was all about you know just bang a load of uh, marketing material out to customers and that was marketing 
through to kind of going, okay, what is it that customers need and want to hear from us and making sure that we're doing that with a you know with the kind of the environment in mind with communities in mind as well as customers employees and and investors so i think yeah that data piece um i think will be quite an interesting um conversation going forward okay so my final question to you then is you know we started the podcast you know the sector Mm -hmm. perceived maybe not to be so CXC for Mm -hmm. the listeners that work in sectors out there that again might have that kind of tag if you like Mm -hmm. what would be your single bit of advice in terms of regardless Mm -hmm. you know ensuring that customer experience is at the heart of the organization Mm -hmm. for the customer and the people to use your point yeah so uh, I mean my my single piece of advice to anybody is that you need to get to your customers and you know you need to do that in whatever way suits your organization so for me if I don't listen to a bunch of customer calls in a week I feel like I haven't got my finger on the pulse like what is going on what how are our customers feeling what are they talking to us about so listening to those calls getting out into your organization and seeing how it is to be a customer if you can be a customer be a customer mystery shopping all of that stuff so that you can really see and feel it from the customer side because I think that's where the real stories come from that's when you're able to articulate what it is that you're trying to fix rather than it being you know this processes and you know this journey isn't quite right if you can really bring that to life through what you've seen and experienced I think that's that's my advice to anybody um, particularly when it's not a CXC type industry (laughs) well you've inspired me for sure so thank you for sharing with our listeners all of your uh, great insight and bringing to life some of the fantastic stuff that you know Biffa and the waste management industry are doing for the environment and the customer well thank you for having me okay see you soon thank you so much Kate thank you